everyone here is pretty much in shock. It's utter destruction everywhere we look. Unrelenting devastation. The storm that wouldn't stop. Hurricane Dorian, the slowest moving Category 5 in history obliterating the Bahamas for more than two days. So many lost their homes and everything that they own. WJXT's Vic Michelucci spent four days, 96 hours on the ground, immediately following the storm and takes you into the heart of this natural disaster. Video you've never seen before. Stories of survival you'll never forget. My friend of mine died last night because he was short for water and bread. My grandmother, I lost my grandmother. She got swept away in one of the uh, flash floods. I've never smelled this before. What is it? It's death. From the time we hit the ground, they just circled around, waited for us patiently to unload the supplies, and then just raised their hands up in praise. A nation nearly wiped off the map, now struggling to move on. Ninety-six hours of anguish. Please pray for us. Please pray for us, everyone. Please pray for us. Me and my baby. My, everyone that's staying in the apartment building, we stuck right here. Please pray for us. Actually, uh, please. Pray, pray for us. Pray for Abigail, please. I'm begging you. My baby is only four months old, please pray for us. I'm begging you, pray for us. The apartment building, as we stay in, the, the whole roof came off. We're standing right here. Um, people trying to make it to the other side with this white um, houses, but some people, um, the water just took them, and those are the only people that got to make it over there. Some people didn't get to make it. Oh. Everyone, I'm messing up, please. My baby's only four months old. He doesn't know nothing, please. This is crazy. guys, Vic Nicolucci here. We are in Stewart, Florida, near West Palm Beach, and we are about to take off to the Abacos, the hardest hit island in the Bahamas. It is a humanitarian crisis. We are being prepared for the worst, for death and destruction, uh, for health issues, but we are going on one of the flights and one of the missions that is part of life-saving operations. So this is the Kodiak that we're going to be flying on. Here's my bag, my gear. It looks almost like a nuclear bomb went off there. It's, just, it, it's undescribable, the devastation. But we're doing everything we can to help. We're just trying to fill the gap in this time of need. I can say that there's a lot of resources there. It's one of the most impressive relief efforts we've ever seen. It's, it's a lot of good things happening. Everybody's coming together.
haven't even discovered the dead people yet. It's not when I was still underneath the rubble, so you know, it's not nice, no water, not the food. It's not, it's not easy. It was just, it was just a disaster, that's all it is. Watch your own people just underneath a bunch of rubble just like that, there's nothing you can do. You can't give a helping hand. It is what it is. The children, it doesn't matter. Everybody in the same situation. Nobody can have nobody. It's the same story. Everybody's broken, so it is what it is. There ain't no Bahamian, no Haitian or white people. It's just a human race. That's it. People. People hurting. The government need to go there and get the water. Nothing. The water what we got is what we salvage from the store. I used to see these things in the U.S. when these things happened. That's what we had to do to eat or drink water. We had no food, we had no drink, we had the children didn't have no food. We had to go inside a shop to get to find food to make sure to survive or give them kids something to eat. We didn't have no nobody to help us until we leave, until we came to Nassau. I feel like we had a lot a lot of love and I appreciate Nassau people. They show us the love. Even though they give us water, they give us a bag of chips, they show us love and appreciation in Nassau than the government in Nassau. And you know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't like how they treat Abaco people. I'm going to have to find some place to stay and then try to go to the States. Abaco finish, there's nothing there, nothing. No gas, no, no, nothing, nothing in Abaco because it's not safe. You can smell dead body, you know? is not safe. This is a village called Mud, and if you look at the ground, you will see mud. Most of the water has gone away, but the flooding here was horrific. People lost their lives, and the destruction is everywhere you look. In this village that once had thousands of people, not one building remains standing. It's a very heart wrenching, gut-wrenching smell. There's just so much stuff buried here. That they, they're not going to be able to assess a death toll until they really dig in to the, the area and uncover a lot of these houses that were just, just covered up by other houses and, and things. I've really, I've, ne I've never smelled this before. What is it? It's death. It's death. It's, 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 rotting food, it's it's mold. It's nothing you wanna get used to at all. I've smelt it before after Maria doing search and rescue there, but not it's it's definitely tenfold here. We take a small team in initially and we assess what the needs of the communities are, what what 
resources are here and what resources are not here. I've been from from Harvey to Irma to Maria in Puerto Rico. That's where I've been for the last two years. I got there a week after Maria, and it was pretty bad there. But this, there's it's, it's tenfold here comparatively speaking to that because there's those such low-lying areas that the water came up over the tops of the houses and the surge just just bulldozed everything and these people in these uh in these areas they just didn't have a chance they didn't have a place to go they didn't have a way out and there were in a lot of the houses like this they were just waiting out the storm and a lot of them had to had to wait for the eye of the storm to get over them and they rushed and scurried as far as they, they could inland, the safer uh, buildings. I heard uh, that the only, they actually, the, the eye of the storm actually saved a lot of lives here. They had the, a nice little break in between so they could actually come out and rescue their family and friends and get them to, to stable places to live. From top to bottom, there's no power. The water's contaminated, and you're not getting water, by the way, but the, the water's contaminated. You still have multiple bodies in the water, areas that vehicles cannot pass, by the way. A lot of people died in their homes because, they, like I said, they couldn't swim, and the surge was so high. Um, people are actually right now killing you for water and bread in Abaco as we speak. A friend of mine died last night because he was short for water and bread. You understand me? The thing is, I... I always had faith in, in my government, but they really let us down on this one, all right? Some of the things that I've seen, it just shows the lack of respect and care for human life at this point in time. Tired of being a number? At 121 Financial Credit Union, you are our member, an owner, not a number. Since 1935, hardworking families and businesses have trusted us with their banking. Experience our friendly and personal service today. Federally insured by the NCUA. Ready? It's happening right now at Rooms to Go. Pick from 100 beautiful rooms, each under $1,000. Picture it, your home, fully furnished in your style. With living rooms under $1,000. Dining rooms under $1,000. Bedrooms under $1,000. 100 stylish options under $1,000. And it gets even better. Finance for $20 or less per month, interest free. Furnish your home to perfection. Now at Rooms to Go. a new 2020 Toyota Corolla LE for just $189 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Spencer at Riverside Dental and Implant Center. If you have bad teeth and just want a proud new smile to change your life, implants, dentures that actually fit and more, for a free exam and consultation, call us at 1-800-NEW-TEETH, just like 20,000 other patients have done for many years. And it won't cost you an arm and a leg. Best decision I ever made. I would recommend Riverside Dental to anyone. What are you waiting for? Tired of being a number? At 121 Financial Credit Union, you are our member, an owner, not a number. Since 1935, hardworking families and businesses have trusted us with their banking. Experience our friendly and personal service today. Federally insured by the NCUA. Right now we're so frustrated. I can't even talk like that because we lost, like I say, we lost everything. But we thank God before because we're still alive. Me and fam my family, we're good. It's gone. It's gone. But we could say that it, it, it finished. We don't know how long that could stay to get repair or something like that. Yeah. What's next for you and your family? I can't say nothing. You don't know? No. You don't know what's next? How can the rest of the world help you right now? 
they, they, if they could take me somewhere to stay, to live, I would appreciate it. That would be a good thing for us. Dad taking good care of you? Yes. Okay. And what do you have here? Snacks. You got snacks? Uh-huh. Were you hungry? Uh-huh. Thank you. Coming to you live from Freeport in the Bahamas. This is one of the hardest hit areas after Hurricane Dorian. We are at the port and what we are seeing here is amazing. It's going to restore your faith in humanity. We have dozens of volunteers and crew members from Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. They prepared 20,000 meals, hot and cold. They have 47,000 bottles of water. They've got supplies, and, and this morning, in fact, just now, they're unloading it, and they're putting it into trucks from NEMA, which is the Bahamian version of FEMA in the United States, and then NEMA is going to give it out, we believe, to churches, to nonprofits, and to people who need it down here. How dire is the situation out there? Well, I mean, we have no utilities currently. Um, people can't cook. Um, people are also stressed out and traumatized from the worst hurricane ever to hit the Bahamas and probably the country. What can Americans watching this right now do to help out the Bahamian people? Um, I think we need a lot of support and it's not always just food and water, it's the psychological um, be benefits, it's talking to people, it's coming to help, people got to clean up and if you drive around the community you can see where the water went into their homes and all the stuff that was ruined is on the side of the street for pickup. What's it been like the past week for you? Um, dealing with the wife and kids and just uh, sleeping and just having hot flashes or remembrance of what, what took place, the, the, the storm, the disaster, the death toll. Uh, it's just horrible. Just time to get out of this place for now. Have you lost friends or family members? My grandmother. I lost my grandmother, Miss Modena. Um, yeah, she got swept away in one of the uh, flash floods. Yeah, it took her. So, and they found her body a few days after the storm. So, yeah, that was her. That was terrifying and horrible. Was she there with you? Uh, actually, no. She was at her place, and I w we were in different locations. Hey, we're gonna go ahead. We'll see you there. Ah, uh, the field clear. friend at our church and um, she wanted to check on her mother that was on Manowar Island and uh, we flew down out of Destin to West Palm Beach and met her brother there and we got them out to Manowar from West Palm and that's basically the intention was to get down there to see what we could do and check on their family. We knew that it was going to be bad but we really weren't sure first of all, in what capacity or what capacity we would even be able to help. Yeah, we were happy to be used. I mean, we got there and um, supplies were showing up by a small aircraft and larger aircraft to Marsh Harbor. And we were able to get organized with uh, Medicorp guys at Marsh Harbor and start loading up supplies and getting them out to the areas that were affected the worst and were hard to, hard to access by boat or by road. We dropped in water, we dropped in uh, food supplies, in some cases a little bit of clothing, diapers if they had babies, um, just anything, uh, toothbrushes, I mean everything you could think that you could need when your entire you know, house has been destroyed and you need you know, to be resupplied. This was very hands-on. It was so much more than just dropping supplies, but being able to be there for an emotional connection, just being able to talk to the people, seeing what their needs are, and you know, checking medically, seeing who wanted to be evacuated out, uh, if they were gonna stay, what their needs were to be able to remain in the places that they were. On the way back, 
as we flew over an area, um, Vic pointed out, he said, hey, look down there on the ground. Was there anybody down there? Or have you guys checked that area out? And um, I kind of dismissed it. I said, no, that's just trash blown around, you know, maybe a maybe a dump or something. I don't think it's any, anybody's, you know, anybody's there. I haven't seen anybody wave at us. So we flew right by it, um, kind of dismissed it at that time. And uh, the next day I was flying back and um, I said, let's just stop in there. Let's just kind of see what's going on. And as we landed, um, we saw people one at a time kind of pop up out of the rubble. And the, uh, the guy, one of the EMS guys or medical staff guys with me, I said, hey, why don't you go out there and see what their needs are, see what's going on. And as he was out there, you know, more and more people started surrounding him. And we all sat in that helicopter with anticipation of what, what are they saying, what's going on. And he got back in there and he's like, yeah, these people, they need food, they need water, they need supplies. Um, he's like, um, so, you know, what can you guys do? So I said, yeah, we'll get some supplies to him immediately. So I dropped off that medical staff and came back, got my wife and told her, I said, hey, that, that, that place we flew over, remember that place? She's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, there are people there and they need help, they need stuff. So we instantly started loading up that helicopter with water, food, whatever we could and uh, made an immediate drop there that same day. They were incredible. From the time we hit the ground, they just circled around, waited for us patiently to unload the supplies, and then just raised their hands up in praise. Uh, and just so grateful. They just circled around me and did a big group hug, all 20, 30 people. And uh, then they started dancing around. We turned around and snapped a picture but just incredibly words cannot describe. And I think with the language barrier, the universal understanding was that hands up in the air, dancing in praise. You did this in Puerto Rico? Yes, sir. How does this compare? I was hoping Puerto Rico would be the worst disaster we ever saw, but we were wrong, unfortunately. This is, this is much greater, in my opinion. Why? It's flatter, everything is more flattened. From what I'm seeing, it's a greater devastation in terms of the buildings and everything just flattens. We're setting up a base camp right now at a house that was offered to us and so we're fully stocked and supplied and ready to go and once we get our bearings and we understand the holes that need to be filled then we'll be able to bring more people in to help. Gainesville Fire Rescue's Urban Search and Rescue Team, which is part of uh, Task Force 8. And what we did was an ADSAR mission, so an aerial deployment for search and rescue into Marsh Harbor. We've been here about four days now. We've been assisting the locals with search and rescue in an area called the Pease, which was one of the hardest hit areas on the island. So uh, we've conducted search and rescue, looking for any, anybody that may still be alive, and also assisting in locating human remains and, and uh, assisting locals in removing no, that's tough. What have you found so far? So in the area that we searched, uh, we probably searched about 50% of the area called the Pease. Uh, during that time, uh, we located 10 human remains and uh, had the opportunity to rescue one camp. I know that you're a first responder and, and you've seen a lot, but tell me about the toll on you and your team as, as far as finding these remains of people that lost their lives. So that's something that, uh, you know, that we have to deal with not only in the fire service, but uh, generally not on this level and not with this devastation. I would say you know, equal, equal to finding the remains was speaking to the family. And we would occasionally encounter people that would tell us, like, my, my son or my, you know, my loved one was found today. So that was very heartfelt, and that was one of the, one of the reasons that, uh, that we assisted with that mission is we wanted to bring some closure to the local families. Do you feel like you've been able to make a difference? I do. That was one of the, one of the first things uh, that happened whenever 
will never be hit the island was uh, we talked with a local and they thanked us for uh, coming to be able to give closure to some of the families. So that mission sort of hit home with us. Jose, come over here. Hold it, hold it right there, guys. Come on, bro. Come on, big boy. Right there, buddy. Bring him right out the sand. You ever wish there was a place that had great rates and all the financial services you need without all the fees and hassles? Dude, there is. Community first. You ever wish you got smaller ear gauges? Nope. Wishing for a new car? Don't miss the Community First Car Sale, Saturday, October 5th from 9 to 5 p.m. downtown at the corner of Beaver and Link, featuring a huge selection of new and used cars and trucks, along with Community First great rates. Love what you drive. Love where you bank. I look good. My mom. My dad. Worked for Cancer Specialist of North Florida. She says her practice is special. Because doctors make the decisions, not stockholders. What's a stockholder? That means new ways to help people are brought in sooner. And there's more time to spend with patients. Hey, as long as there's still time for me. I'm proud of you, Dad. You rock, Mom. Cancer Specialist of North Florida. Cancer doesn't care, we do. This is a Farah and Farah medical alert. If you develop non-Hodgkin's lymphoma after being exposed to the weed killer Roundup, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call Farah and Farah at 1-800-500-5555. Roundup's connection with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma resulted in a recent verdict of $2 billion. If you're battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, let Farah and Farah help you fight to make them pay. Call 1-800-500-5555. Marsh Harbor, you get around however you can. We caught a ride on this pickup truck. It's smashed, but it's still running. The driver had to siphon fuel to keep it going. And a few moments ago, we picked up these two women who are trying to get a ride to the airport. Room for two more? Yeah, if you want to hop in, you need a ride? You on the yeah, come on, come on. Come on home. You want to sit up here with me? Careful. You're good. You good. How bad's your house? Uh, it's destroyed. It's totally destroyed. Is your family okay? Yeah, they're great. Thanks. And what are you doing? What's next? Um, I'm heading into Nassau right now, so I'm not sure from here. It's a mad rush, right? You want to get off the island? Yes. 
What's it like been living here? Nice. It was a really, really nice place to live. What do you need right now? Uh, food, clothing, and my vehicle is destroyed. It has a lot of damages, but hopefully I'll get it sorted out. Are you holding on to faith? Yes, definitely. Running out the storm. Terrible. Tell me about it. The wave was splashing. The all the windows burst open. And the water is high. The water is doing big wave. That's How'd you survive? We had that. He closed the door. He he get caught in the sun, and that's all. You got your family here with you? Yes, sir. How bad was it? It was terrible. It was terrifying. Tell me. Tell me what, what you went through. Um, the water went... We were in a two-story house, and the water went all the way up to our house. The windows, they shattered in our faces. It was just terrible. <laughs> but you've got everybody accounted for? Yes, sir. What was it like living after? It was unsanitary, very... No water, no food, no clothing. Everything lost during the storm, during the hurricane. So, uh, what, what can people do? What can people do to help right now? Um, they can send stuff for the people of Abaco. Is like, the aid getting to you? Mm, some help, some. What, what do people need the most? Um, Food, clothing, water, clean water, anything really, anything. And you have how many kids? Just one. One kid? Yes, sir. Okay. And he's being strong, huh? Yes, sir. That's Carlito? Yes. Where are you, what's next? Um, trying to come off of this island, start a new life from somewhere else. In, off the Bahamas? Yeah. Where would that be? America. One Jinky. Who's this? Jinky. One Jinky. You're on camera, Jinky. You're on camera. You heading out? Yes. You live here? Yes. What's it? Uh, what's it? What's it been like? What is it? Six days? Six days? You know? Well, well, I was stuck in the car for two days, stuck in a a shelter for two days. Then uh, after that, it was really it was frustrating, depressing, but we had to fight to survive. You know. What do you what do you mean? Well, the water supplies came in at late at the end. I had my dog and myself only one gallon of water for two days, and he drank most of it. <laughs> and I, I got trapped on the highway because I live near the water. So did it was you, a bit did you of lose a. Any friends? No, well, well, I knew a couple of guys who's passed away, you know, but uh, luckily. I got saved after the third day, you know, I was stuck right on the water, but... You lost everything? Everything, everything, everything. A couple of clothes, but this is actually dog food. It's dog food? That's all dog stuff, not one thing belonging to me. This is what you got? <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> Where are you from, Scotland? Scotland, yes. I've been in the Bahamas 23 years. What personally have you had to deal with? Like, I'm, like, the, I, I'm a middle class, 
neighborhood, so they're not targeting me. Right now, they're going after the tourist homes. There's a lot of millionaires, tourists living in there, but they, you know, with, you know, safes and, you know, like I, my neighborhood is like I have tons of dogs. Plus, all of the neighbors' dogs, all of their fences fell down. So, like, there's pit bulls running everywhere in my neighborhood that I'm feeding, and all of them barking all night long. Looters trying to get in there, they're barking and chasing. Like, I, I mean, it's just like I'm, I'm ready to snap. And like, you're you're heavily armed. Yeah, yeah. Have you had to fire at anybody? No, I haven't. No. But your friends have. Yes, my friends have. Like that lady I know. Like she had she had to like shoot at him three times to make him turn back. Scary. Yeah. How do you sleep? I I haven't. This is one of the most difficult things that we have seen so far in the Bahamas. We had hundreds of people get off ferries like these ones here. They came from the Abaco Islands, the hardest hit from Hurricane Dorian. Many people dead. So many lost their homes and everything that they own. Now they are here at the port of Nassau trying to find out what is next. They've gotten a little bit of food. They have water, but for so many of them, they are homeless. They're without resources. They're without transportation and they have no money. The first boat came in at 3 a.m. So I got here like about 2.45 in the morning. We came with water and some care packs. And again, um, the majority of the first crew that came in at 3 a.m. were Haitians. That boat also came in from Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We spoke to some of them who had horrific stories to tell us, and they're still telling us that there's large numbers of persons still left behind. Right here, right now, what we're doing and see what the people need, and already we start calling over there and to see, you know, stuff that we can bring over here. And we are um, hoping in the near future we can come and conduct an, a medical um, a mission. We are based in uh, Broward County in Miami Dade County, Florida. And uh, right now, the thing that we see is uh, they need air mattresses at the shelters. The second one at the church, they don't have uh, mattresses. So the people have blankets and sleeping on the floor. So after what they've been through for the last week, so what they can need, we all can understand, is a warm, at least if they cannot have a warm bed, but they can have a mattress to sleep on. Ranger. Drive it now with zero for 60 plus up to 2,500 total cash back. Only at your local Ford dealer. This hurricane season, for the latest traffic information, use FL511. FL511 provides the latest traffic information with camera snapshots for road conditions to help you safely travel. Download the Florida 511 mobile app, now with voice interaction, to speak a request for your destination. Travel smart with Florida 511. Visit fl511.com and download the mobile app to connect, know, and go. By now, everyone has heard about saving money on their energy bills, but most people don't think about their windows. Window World knows that the biggest energy loss in almost every home are the windows. You can upgrade your heating and air, your appliances, that's great. But before you do that, upgrade your windows to Window World's energy efficient windows. Window World's windows are easy to clean, energy efficient, and have the absolute best guarantee in the business. Call Window World today. Window, Window World, simply, simply the, the best, best for less. less. From time to time, you hear people say, we get our clients too much money. Do they really deserve a million dollars after a car wreck? Hundreds of thousands for back pain after an injury? Here's how we think about it. How much would you pay not to have lightning bolts shoot down your leg every day forever? How much would you pay to be able to golf again, to dance again, to lift your child in the air? I know what my number is, and our clients deserve nothing less. There's only one Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. The 2019 Ranger. Drive it now with zero for 60 plus up to 2,500 total cash back. Only at your local Ford dealer.
My name is uh, uh, Jim, Jimbo Stockton, and um, we have an organization called Adventures in God's Creation uh, that has a kind of a sub-ministry called Island Crisis Flyers, Rescue Relief Flights. And so we've been just actively involved in the Bahamas for the last several years running relief flights. And, and it's so crazy when, when airplanes are running water, you know, because but these when the islands get hit, the water goes out and people, and that's the first thing that's needed. So. It wasn't easy. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's not pretty. It's not the pretty Bahamas that most people expect to see. You know, it's muggy, it's hot, there's mosquitoes, and, and, um, and the water is all churned up. You don't have that pretty blue. I mean, so what's really important, uh, I think, is, is we're taking it directly to the people. Uh, because it, and that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is, because we're not always the first flight in after the hurricane, uh, but we're typically and frequently a, the first supplies that hurricane victims actually receive. Uh, which it, it just gets bottlenecked in the bureaucracy before it gets out to them. And so it, it's great to be able to provide, uh, you know, survival type food uh, right at that, at that time and you know, share some love and compassion and, and, and give the people hope. You were literally dropping it in. <laughs> literally dropping it in, yeah. What were the biggest needs immediately? Well, I, I call water. it like phase one and phase two and phase three. Phase one is more evacuation, survival food, uh, water food. Uh, you know, um, it, it's kind of the biggest need going in, you know, more of the quite survival type stuff. And then phase two, which I think we're moving to, and we're in the process of moving to right now, is more stabilization, where things get stabilized. And then phase three would be the rebuilding process. And so, uh, so it's moving into this stabilization to where everybody can kind of catch their breath and have some shelter over their head, have some food and water uh, that's flowing, and then, um, and then from there it'll move to the, the rebuilding. What's next? How can we continue to support the Bahamas? You know, I, I, again, it's a stabilization thing. I think they need to be talking rebuilding. They need to be, we need to just mobilize the troops, keep it in the forefront, uh, particularly you guys and so forth. I mean, you've been right in the thick of it. You know, I've been with you right in the thick of it, and it's, uh, um, and, and, and talk rebuilding, get them back in their homes, get them back uh, on their island and, um, and, and get it flourishing again. You know, support the Bahamas, you know, support the Bahamas where, wherever you go in the Bahamas, just uh, uh, they need our, our, our love and support. We're now in Stewart, Florida at a small private airport that has become the hub for the donations leaving from the U.S. People are taking U-Haul trucks, unloading from all across the Southeast. It truly is an amazing effort. We had about 200 cases of hurricane supplies. This is absolutely going to save people and help people out.
During the 2020 Model Year Kickoff event at Jacksonville's Honda Giants, pay nothing down except for your tag. Like a new Honda Accord, just $219 a month, sign and drive with nothing down except your tag. At Honda of the Avenues, the Honda Giant. Dear MS, when we first met, I thought you'd control every part of me. Overwhelm me. Define me. But I found a way to give myself more space. I met Ocrevus, an infusion treatment that's two times a year. For adults with relapsing or primary progressive forms of multiple sclerosis, Ocrevus is proven effective in reducing relapses in RMS and slowing disability progression in RMS and PPMS. Don't take Ocrevus if you've had a life-threatening allergic reaction to it, or if you have hepatitis B. Tell your doctor about vaccinations, or if you've had Hep B, as it could come back. Ocrevus can cause infusion reactions that may require hospitalization. It can increase your risk of infections. While no cases of PML were reported in clinical trials, it could happen. An increased risk of cancer, including breast cancer, may exist. Infusion reactions and infections are the most common side effects. Sorry, MS. You don't get to control every part of me. MS can't own us. Ask your doctor about two times a year Ocrevus. Before you do it yourself, go to your local home show. Talk to an expert. Oh. Trust me. Find experts at the Jacksonville Home and Patio Show September 26th through 29th at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Buy online and save at JacksonvilleHomeShows.com. During the 2020 Model Year Kickoff event at Jacksonville's Honda Giant, pay nothing down except for your tag. Like a new Honda Accord, just $219 a month, sign and drive with nothing down except your tag. At Honda of the Avenues, the Honda Giant. The main objective is to get these generators out so people can start using them for power. I understand. I understand. Okay. So, I'm going to talk to you. You might be able to drug, drug them off the Cooper Sound then. I don't think so. Okay. But we can we can talk about it. I just need to get the drop done. As soon as, they'll be here any minute. All right. So, this may be enough, but we may have to have more vehicles. So we are getting relief coming in, um, you know, from all over the place. And um, the chaos that we've experienced uh, a day or two before is now simmering down. We have. Law enforcement on the on the ground for the first time since the hurricane passed, and they happen to keep law and order, and so most people are getting are getting the resources they need to make it, and so the tension is the tension is, is coming down a bit, and so things are looking better. How many people lost their lives in this area? We had no lost lives in, in this in this area from CW to Crown Haven. Um, thank God, uh, everybody's alive, and um, you know trying to get back to some sense of normalcy, uh, but. It's, it, I can't say the same for Ma Sharper and Treasure Geek. It's heartbreaking um, to see the devastation to this amazing uh, island and all the, the flora is gone and the, the homes are destroyed. It's um, heartbreaking to see that, to know what great people we are here trying to help and serve. We're no longer seeing a ton of acute issues. What we are really seeing is um, a lot of chronic issues that require medications that are unavailable or, um, or you know, today we helped with some muscle strains and, uh, and, and injuries. That's the majority of the things that we're seeing. The people here are so amazing because they're so happy and pleased with anything that that they are given or that just they're thrilled to see us. And anyone, they appreciate all the help they can get. So we had done a drop again up to Foxtown at one of the farthest points in the North Abacos. And while we were unloading, a truck just pulled right in frantically. A gentleman jumped out and talked to one of our medic corps guys, Lawson, and made him aware that his grandchildren were stranded up the road near a washed out bridge and that he needed help rescuing them. There again was a language barrier. We weren't really sure what he was saying, but he just said, 
please go find my grandchildren and bring them to me. And I asked what ages they were. He said 10, 6, and 3. So I jumped in the helicopter real quick and I told Justin, hey, we have to go look for these three kids. And his answer to me is, we have no fuel and we're running out of daylight. And uh, we knew it was just a God-given thing and we said, we're going to try it. And so we headed down the road. He said, do you know where this is? And I said, no, I don't, but we'll find it continued down the road about 12 miles and we've discovered a bridge that was completely washed out from the storm and there stood the three girls on one side of the road just hovered to get huddled hovered together and their parents on the complete opposite side of the washed out road just waving their hands frantically About to take a crew to Nassau off of the rough island. Sorry, Alex. I Things are going good. Finally, finalmente. 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 Yeah, finalmente los Estados Unidos. First time ever. 85 and 60 years old. Yeah, ya también. Paparazzi, paparazzi. They call me paparazzi. I don't take a picture. My son married one of the daughters. Oh, okay. What was the most difficult thing for you to see down there? You know, we've been, uh, we know the children in the mud. Uh, we've been ministering to that area for, for almost a decade. Um, we have videos of kids that are no longer alive. Uh, we have uh, videos of people that have lost their family members uh, that, that are there that we're ministering to. That, you know, and so it's, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it really is. It's not about buildings and things. It's about people, about lives. And you see these precious children uh, that are just, uh, uh, that are really, uh, I mean, that's why we're doing it. You see these, these people that are, lives have been totally uh, just disrupted and impacted. And, and I think when people look into the face of those children, uh, it's, uh, it gets real and it gets significant. It's not just about the buildings. It's about the lives that uh, need our help right now.